Hi there, thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about direct and inverse proportion, which really means we are looking to see how numbers change in relationship to each other. As usual, we're going to look at the definitions, the rules, and look at some examples to help you through. I really do hope you find this useful. Let's start with direct proportion. The general rule for direct proportion is that if one amount increases, so does another. Let's just have a look at a very simple example. And this is saying if one litre of milk costs 80p, it then asks how much does two litres cost? Well, quite simply, if one litre is 80p, we look at what has happened to the litres. We've gone from one to two, so it's doubled. So of course the price has also doubled and that will be £1.60. Similarly, if we've got eight litres, we've gone from one up to eight. So we have eight times more. So we would have to take the 80p and multiply by eight and would therefore get six pounds 40. So quite simply, if the number of litres of milk increases, so does the price. That is direct proportion. As you can imagine, however, some of the questions that you might get asked in an exam are slightly more complicated and we need to develop a new rule as to how to handle those. Let's have a look at an example. So here we are being told that three cups of coffee costs £3.60. The question is how much would five cups cost? Now we can't do what I just did with the litres of milk. We can't simply double or multiply because the relationship between three and five is not so clear. Therefore, we have to follow a small two-step process to find our answer. And the first step is to divide to find the cost of one cup. In other words, if we know at the top here that three cups of coffee are £3.60, the first thing we need to do is take that £3.60 and divide by three, because that then tells us that one cup of coffee is £1.20. And that's the key for answering a question like this. Find the price of one unit. We then look at step two, and that is to multiply to find our answer. Because of course, now that we know that one cup is £1.20, we need the price of five. Therefore, we multiply by five answer six pounds. So whatever the question is, you are given a price of a certain number of items. Divide by that number and you'll find the price of one item. Once you have the price of one item, you can multiply to find the price for the number of items you've been asked. Now here we have another typical question involving proportion and quite often we see questions where they give us recipes. This one is for 10 flatjacks and we're told how much we need rolled oats, butter, golden syrup and light brown sugar. Now the question is asking us how much butter is needed if we want to make 25 flapjacks. Now you can answer this question using either of the two methods that we've just looked at, because at the moment we know how much butter, 60 grams, is going to be needed for 10. We're actually going to make 25. Now, if you make the relationship between 10 and 25, and you realize that to get from 10 to 25, you are going to have to multiply by 2.5, then you can do it that way. The number of flapjacks is increasing by 2.5, therefore the amount of butter needs to increase by 2.5, and that would simply be your calculation. 60 times 2.5 is 150 grams. However, if the numbers were slightly more complicated, uh, or you just didn't see that relationship, then you can use the two-step method. Now, in this case, we would say, okay, we know how much butter for 10 flapjacks, it's 60 grams. So if we take that 60 grams and we divide by 10, then that means that each flapjack is six grams. We then look at how much we need to make the 25 flapjacks. Therefore, it's 25 times six grams. And again, you get the answer, 
150 grams. So it really doesn't matter which way you approach this, if you can see straight away a direct relationship, the multiple between the two, you can take it that way. If you can't, then follow the two-step process, find the amount that you need for one flapjack, and then multiply by 25. Another example of direct proportion is when we see a question which has a conversion graph. Because that's showing the same thing. Yeah, this is one of the more common ones where we are looking at the relationship between miles and kilometers. And obviously we can use this to convert so that if we wanted to change 20 miles into kilometers, we would read 20 and go along to the line and then we would read down. So its primary use is to enable us to answer a question about converting distances. But in fact, it is direct proportion because of course, as the number of kilometers increases, so does the corresponding number of miles. So dealing with a conversion graph is direct proportion. I'm going to finish the direct proportion section by looking at one of the more difficult questions I've seen in the foundation curriculum. It says that it costs £825 for five people to stay in a guest house for three nights. And then it's asking how much would it cost for six people to stay for two nights. Initially, you can't see the relationship between these because we have an amount. We also have the number of people and we have the number of nights. But we can apply our two step rule. Don't forget, step one was divide to find one. Now, what's this one? Well, the price that we're looking for is how much it would cost one person to stay for one night. Now, if we have a look at this top row here, we have the overall cost. We know that five people are staying for three nights. So effectively, it means that if we multiply five times three, what we have here is a total of 15 nights stay. Five people, three nights each. That means the total bill is for 15 nights. So the first thing we do is we take our 825 and we divide that by 15. The answer we get there is 55 pounds. Now that is one person, one night. Okay. Now we have that information. Let's have a look at the question. How much would it cost for six people to stay for two nights? So if you have six people who are staying for two nights each, then altogether you are paying for 12 nights. So step two, which is multiply, means that we take the 55 pounds and we multiply it by the 12 nights stay that we are purchasing. And the answer we get is 660 pounds. Slightly more complicated, might be worth looking up some past exam questions and trying to find some examples similar to that. But the principle is the same. We have first found the price of one unit, in this case, one night stay for one person. Once we have that, we can multiply for the number of nights that we are booking in the second line of the question. Let's move on then to the slightly trickier subject of inverse proportion. Now the difference here is that rather than two amounts increasing or decreasing together, they do the opposite. As one increases, the other decreases. So let's have a look at how this works. Here is an example of a question. It's asking if it takes one man six days to build a wall, how long will it take two men? And what about four men? So we have to look at this first line. If it takes one man six days to build a wall, what will the difference be when we have two men? So if we actually look at the number of men, we have gone from one man to two men. That means the number of men has doubled. It's actually gone up by two. Now that means, and we do assume in these questions that the men work at a regular speed and each man does the same amount of work. 
if you have twice as many people, it is going to take you half the time. So the time, which was originally six days, we actually divide by two so that two men can do the same job in three days, half the time. So it's a little bit different. As one amount has doubled, the other amount has halved. The number of men has doubled, the time has halved. Let's again look at this last bit. What happens if there were four men? So again, looking at the number of men, we started out with one and now we have four. So the number of men has multiplied by four. So we have to look at the time. Well, if we have four times as many men, then the amount of time is going to be divided by four. Therefore, six divided by four is 1.5. It will only take one and a half days. So what's happening here is one amount doubles, the other amount halves. If one amount is multiplied by four, the other amount divides by four. They do the opposite. They do the inverse exactly the same as it was with direct proportions. Sometimes the numbers in a question are not quite so obvious. Let's have a look at this one. It's telling us that it takes three builders 10 hours to lay a floor. You're then being asked how long would it take five builders? And again, it's the relationship between the three and the five that's not quite so clear. Now, with an inverse proportion question, we actually do the opposite to what we did with the direct proportion. If you recall, the first step was to divide with the direct proportion. In this case, it's to multiply. So step one, multiply to find out how long it would take one builder to lay a floor. Because if you look at the first line, three builders, 10 hours. So each builder is working for 10 hours. So the total number of hours being worked, three men are working 10 hours each. So altogether, it's 30 hours. So that's how long it would take one builder. Now that we have this information, if we know that one builder takes 30 hours, we now move to step two, and that is to divide to find our answer. So we have 30 hours of labor altogether. That's what it would take one builder, 30 hours. But in fact, we don't have one builder now. The question is asking us about five builders. Therefore, we can divide by five to find out how long it would take five builders. So five builders, it would take six hours. So as you can see, the actual steps are the same. We have a multiply and a divide, but we do it in the opposite direction. Well, you know how we love an equation in maths and this is no different. The actual general equation for inverse proportion is x equals a over y. Not going to dwell on that too much other than explain what it actually means. And it simply means, for example, if x is multiplied by two, then y is divided by two. And so it goes on. If x is multiplied by five, then y is divided by five. Let me show you an example of that before we finish. So here we are, we're being told that m is inversely proportional to n. Remember what that means? As one goes up, the other goes down. So if m is multiplied by two, n divides by two. If m is multiplied by 10, n divides by 10 and vice versa. We're then being given a situation where we are told what two values are of m and n. It's saying that when m is equal to 30, n is equal to five. Then we're asked the question, what's the value of m when n is 40. So we need to look at these two lines and see whether we can identify how one of these numbers has changed. Well, we are given the value of n in both situations here. Now, n has increased from five up to 40. We need to know what that multiple is. So quite simply, 40 divided by five tells us that n has been multiplied by eight. Now follow the rule. If n has been multiplied by 8, then m 
has to be divided by 8. Where was m? m was 30, therefore we have to divide that by 8. So the new value for m is 3.75. So don't forget, whatever the multiple is of one of the numbers, you have to divide the other number by the same amount. There is another situation where we use proportion, and that's where we are asked to find something called the best buy, where you are given things for sale in different quantities and asked to find out which gives the best value. It is proportion, but it's also kind of a topic on its own. Therefore, I am covering that in a separate video, and I'll put a link to that in the description for this one. I think some of the best advice is to take these types of questions slowly. They do sometimes look complicated. They tell you a story. They have numbers that don't seem to relate. But if you follow the rules, you will be absolutely fine. If you have found this useful, please do hit the subscribe button immediately below me here. Here's another video that you might find useful and hopefully I will see you again. Thank you.